My name is Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slay the Spy and Modded. I apologize for the slight delay in episodes. Uh, it has been primarily due to the fact that I've been adjusting to a new schedule for uploading Enter the Gungeon as well. And Enter the Gungeon videos tend to be longer, both in file size and just duration. <sighs> so it's been a bit rough to get everything off the ground, but I think we're there now. Alright, so we've got the, bot, uh, the current mods installed of the Mod the Spire Launcher, Base Mod, Always Whale, Fetch Mod, Colored Map, The Construct, Replay the Spire, and STS Black Ruse. STS Black Ruse includes a new character known as... Nope, it's this one. Uh, known as the Servant. A servant of demons, perfected at killing and housekeeping, holds a thousand and one blades. Uniform is their opening relic. At the start of each combat, obtain six knives. Knives are uh, effectively a resource that you juggle. I'll turn Ascension off here. Oh god, as soon as I turned Ascension off, it went to the wrong window. Cool. I'll turn Ascension off here, because I'm not familiar enough with his character in order to play on Ascension, but let's give it a go. Uh, it looks like there's a couple edging issues there on the skeleton. Fair enough. Uh, another try, or rather on the images that are set upon the skeleton. Choose to upgrade a card, max HP, transform two cards, obtain a boss relic. Cool. So let's have a quick look at our opening deck. We've got strikes and defends, naturally. Also, we've got kidney shot, throws two knives. Each deals four damage and applies a weak. And then the upgrade is to throw three knives. So I would be able to use this two times when it's upgraded per fight, and it would deal 12 damage and apply three weak. Uh, we've also got house cleaning, discard two cards, obtain three knives. Upgrades to be zero cost. Interesting. I wonder if there's something that expends knives and allows you to draw. We'll see. We'll see. Well, I'm going to upgrade the kidney shot so that I actually have some ongoing aggressive potential. I kind of want to take the two elite path. There's two upgrades along it as well. So kidney shot would not kill the back line, but it will weaken the front line to the point that I can get away with only a single, uh, single defend, which is going to make our life a hell of a lot easier. Three on the back line. So we can see our knives in the very bottom left there. So what can we see from the base deck? We can see that we've got knife synergy. And we seem to also have discard synergy as different elements of this character. Okay. Time theft. Vision. New keyword. Predict the enemy intent for the next turn. If correct, trigger the effects. Same effects do not stack. Wow. Uh, there's also first strike. Deal nine damage, draw a card. Next turn, lose an energy. Mm, I don't want to lose energy. This is also a new keyword. Shift. Shift effects can only be triggered by discarding the card. Discard the top card of your draw pile and shift, you draw two cards. Okay, so there is a discard draw synergy. I would take shifting thoughts here, but time theft at the very least seems like it's going to be a great way for me to demonstrate my knowledge of the game. Take the max HP here rather than the curse, though. <laughs> I would immediately be able to remove the curse, but of course. Because of course that's how that went. Uh, we'll remove defense first. Okay, so time theft. You're attacking for 11 on the first turn. On the second turn, they either defend and buff and bellow, or they attack for 7 and defend. So how does this work? Oh, it gives me a choice. It's, it's basically 50-50 here. I'm going to say they intend to attack. Right, so its effect is delayed as well. I don't draw two cards right now. They did intend to attack, so I get to draw my cards and I get to attack. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, that's a nice way to figure out what that does. Unfortunately, it did cost me some HP in order to figure out what that did. But you, you just... I thought it was going to draw the cards in the future. None of these are new. So, far seeing next turn, gain 10 block and an energy, uh, 14 block and an energy. This is like, basically, the construct has a card, which is next turn, gain 10 block, anticipate, upgrades to next turn, gain 14 block. And is it anticipate? It is anticipate. And then they've also got analyze, which is gain energy next turn. This is like an amalgamation of those that's actually quite good 
Fast seeing seems like quite powerful. Uh, shift deals five additional combat this damage. Sorry, damage this combat and put it into your hand. So potential is in like a heavy discard deck because if you shift it, it goes back into your hand. So it's a really good way to always have something that you can discard. I like this. That'll make a discard synergy really, really powerful. I kind of want to go with something more. Uh, you know what? I do want to go with the discard synergy. I don't think that my you know, vision is going to be enough. So let's take discard. There was also deal 10 damage to all enemies and weaken. I think, over on the left-hand side. I've got to remember, this is a new character, so I do need to be reading everything all of the time. So the Acid Slime is most likely not to attack next turn. It's most likely to... Never mind, it decided to attack. So that's, that's fine. It's fine. It's not like I... <laughs> Take the potential back into our hand. It's not like I was relying on it. Some, uh, some enemies just don't have entirely predictable attack patterns. They just have RNG for what they do next. Okay, so it looks like a lot of this is around planning your next turn. Advance, draw two cards. Next turn, draw one fewer cards. And draw three, draw one fewer. Mm. There's also sabotage. Deal 12 damage. Enemy loses six strength for a turn. Sorry, eight strength for a turn up to 12. It exhausts as well. Who's our boss here on the first floor? That's Sabotage is actually really useful against that. Take a single copy. Definitely going to be house cleaning to get potential upgraded. And kidney shot and strike. That was a really good opening turn, frankly. Sabotage and time theft. Enemy intends to attack because they literally only attack. What? They're attacking? Who could have guessed such a thing? Enemy still weak in this turn and single kill. Easy. More bank. Whenever you climb a floor, gain 12 gold. No longer works when you spend any gold at a shop. As well as fast forward, gain uh, gain eight block, reduce the durations of debuffs on you by one turn. It does not increase the duration, the debuff duration reduction on upgrade. But this is like a, I mean, it's effectively like a leap, right? Well, it's, it's closer to like a charge battery because it's just like a solid defensive card that has an upside as well. It's not bad. Morning call, innate, draw two cards, exhaust ethereal. That's just excellent. It's, Consider the fact that Morning Call is costing you a draw in order to get into your opening hand, right? But it's drawing two cards for zero. So it is one card benefit, right? If you upgrade it, this is effectively a Ring of the Snake or a Bag of Preparation. And then Indiscriminate deal eight damage to all enemies. If you shift, all enemies, shift is of course discard it by the way, uh, all enemies lose four strength for a turn. I'm going to take Morning Call and try and combo off. I think Time Theft getting upgraded is going to be ridiculous. Because I think I will be able to use it well. House Cleaning. Let's guard those two. I could weaken the Frontliner, but I'm not going to. I'll weaken the backliner there because the frontliner are more intense on killing. Mm -hmm. Time theft. Well, the slaver has done its only non attack thing this turn, so I know that it's going to be attacking next turn. Oh, we're taking a lot of damage. We don't really defend well enough, I believe. Oh, look, it's attacking this turn. Discard those two. Easy. And two down. Potential if I discard. 
will get to lethal. Hell yeah. Murderous Aura. Blight. Okay. So Murderous Aura is a rare card, a rare power for two energy. The thing that I'm concerned about is it's a new keyword as well. Blighted enemies will take extra damage when attacked. At the start of your turn, apply one Blight to all enemies. What's the upgrade for this? Innate. So that's why multi-hits exist, right? Because then you benefit from it multiple times. So it's effectively strength, right? It's just strength not on yourself, but it's on your target. This is similar to a, a mechanic that another character has that's named very similarly as well. It's like rot or something, but it decreases over time. All right, I think I'll take the murderous aura here. There's also gouge, deal eight damage, blight effects gouge three times, two times. So yeah, blight is effectively strength, but it's it's on your target rather than on yourself. And no escape, vision, deal 16 damage and apply two weak. 20 damage and apply three weak. Mm. I've got to take the murderous aura. It's rare. All right. Meet on the bone. If your HP is at or below 50% at the end of combat, heal. It's going to be nice for us. Time theft. I mean, I already know what's going to be happening here. You're going to be attacking next turn because you are guaranteed to be attacking. So I'm more than fine with accusing you of attacking next turn. Mm-hmm. Murderous Aura is going to be really good here. Taking a hell of a lot of damage. But the Murderous Aura is going to already hit two of you, but remove the artifacting from another. All right. Those front two liners are extremely killable. Although it looks like I am going to die instead. <laughs> eight damage on you, eight damage on you, yeah. Single defense not going to be enough. Even if I weaken the front liner, we're not going to be defended, are we? I mean, like, I may as well try and do it and just see if it works. It's not going to. My ultimate goal was just live through that fight and then start letting the beat on the bone start healing me back up. That's okay, though. I expect to lose with the character a bunch of times while I try and find out what exactly their core archetypes are so that I can actually build, choose the correct value cards, those kinds of things. Obtain a random rare card, though, seems like a good idea. I could also just consider dodging elites and going for value paths. Yeah, I think I'll actually be doing that. Whew. 250 gold for a curse. I usually wouldn't take that option. But I don't really know what I'm doing right now, so... I would rather have the gold to try and buy something that will carry me while I figure out what I'm going to do doing. Kidney shot. Discard. Frankly, whatever. Yeah. Getting off the ground here is a wee bit rough. All right. Silver blades. Each knife deals two additional damage. Two to three. Okay. Potential we've seen before. Haste is another power. Draw one more card next turn for each attack card you've played this turn. It's ethereal. Upgrades to remove ethereal. I think I'm going to take Silver Blades because that seems to hint that there is a knife-related strategy. I'm going to take the extra curse as well because I'm, frankly, a moron. I'm going to take a third curse. Why not? We do get the Incense Burner every five turns, gain an intangible. Effectively, what I'm doing here is 
trying to set myself up for a build that will win in spite of me. <laughs> Uh, really, I'm just taking risks. All right. Starlight, throw four knives. Each deals five damage to a random enemy. It's ethereal. Seven damage to a random enemy on the upgrade. Rearm is obtaining three knives, gain one strength for a turn, two strength for a turn on the upgrade. And throw a knife that deals six damage, gain six block. Gain eight block. So this is like one knife, but it's also iron wave with one increase on each in order to offset the cost. I'm going to go for Starlight because it's rarer. Oh my god. Alright, we're gonna have to check a lot of these. So number one, we've seen the previous two. Entangle, apply the debuffs on you to the enemy. Highlight, spend all energy, gain 13 block X times, apply X weak to you. The upgrade is just 18 block. Alright. Well, if you're a defensive deck, that seems ridiculous. Seems like it guarantees your win, frankly. Embodiment, at the end of your turn, add a random temporal card to your draw pile, and the upgraded is upgraded in temporal. Upgrading cards makes them more powerful. Cards can only be upgraded once. Oh, no, temporal. Temporal cards are unplayable and ethereal. Their special uh, effects will be triggered when drawn. All right, I'm going to take the frozen egg and then embodiment, because it seems like there are a lot of really, really powerful... Uh, I'm also going to take a... Elixir for curse removal. But it seems like there's a lot of really, really powerful uh, powers for this character. And I would like to have those. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Starlight left. Damn it. I forgot about that. Okay, Temporal Mind. Uh, sorry? Temporal misd... Misdirection? When this card is drawn, apply two Blight and Weak to all enemies. Now, it's ethereal, but if I discard it, right, it can't be exhausted. I'm also going to use the Elixir in this fight to remove the two curses from my deck. When this card is drawn, gain 5 knives and 12 block. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I really thought might happen. Another Temporal Arms? Hell yes. Oh, gosh. I can house cleaning to discard both of them and keep them in my deck. <laughs> temporal Essence. When this card is drawn, gain 2 energy and draw 3 cards. Yeah, okay. I think at this point... We have defined our deck entirely around embodiment. That just killed on draw. Stress reliever. To look at the top three cards. Sorry, at the start of your turn, look at the top three cards of your draw pile. You may discard any of them. I kind of want to take rearm, actually. Because I want this to be like an embodiment. Embodiment? What? Is that a word? I thought it was embodiment. E-M. To embody something. All right. Um, I could take Stress Reliever. Stress Reliever would allow me to put a lot of cards in my deck that have discard synergy, right? Yeah. The thing is, you're not drawing them, right? It says specifically, look at the top three cards of your draw pile. You may discard any of them. So you're not drawing and then discarding them, which means you won't trigger temporal effects. All right, I'm going to take rearm then. Two to three. I think I'll upgrade Starlight first. Reality Marble. All cards lose ethereal property for this combat. All right, so what that would do is it would make our upgraded temporal cards, which are ethereal, not ethereal, so they would stay. Uh, it would be bad in terms of, like, dazed. This would guarantee that all dazed shuffle themselves back into our deck, which would be really bad. 
manipulate, add two random temporal cards to your draw pile and three on the upgrade. But it would guarantee our temporal cards stay in our deck. I think I'll pass though. The boot, whenever you deal four or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to five. Silver blades attack. One of the reasons that I'm fine with having discard synergy in this deck is because we do have curses in this deck as well. So it'll help us get rid of those. Starlight's going to be ridiculous here, right? Yeah. Unparalleled, if there are no other cards in your deck that cost... Wait, what? If there is no other card that costs two in your deck, this doesn't cost two. Oh, it looks like it would otherwise. Okay. Gain two strength and two decks. Innate, deal three damage. Next turn, draw one more card. I mean, I do just have Embodiment, but if I play Embodiment, then Unparalleled will always be triggerable. I'm going to take Unparalleled. Remove all curses from your deck. Hell yeah. <laughs> Told you. Uh, and I can't play Unparalleled. Uh, I'll take a Skill Potion. Embodiment is going to be really handy there. I'll rearm and give him a kidney shot. Thankfully, the incense burner is going to keep me safe that turn. You know what? I actually don't want to take the damage that's coming in right now. So you know what? We'll just kill. All right. Anchor. Start each combat with 10 block as well as a fairy in a bottle. Double your knives exhaust. Okay. That seems useful. I didn't want to make this a knives deck, though. I'm not going to, then. You can't make me. I mean, you can. Like, if you ask in the comments, I'll usually bend towards that will. After enough time, at least. Starlight, and then throw the knives and stab them for the kill. Misdirection. Next turn, gain an intangible exhaust. Okay. That's an interesting card. And then this is also gain six block and one blight and weep to all enemies. Nine to upgrade. Yep, I'll be passing both of those though. Ooh, we have no AoE in the entire deck, so this could be a problem. I am going to double hit the worst targets. I'll take three damage this turn, but I will get to draw my extra three cards from the Centennial Puzzle. What is this symbol? Unparalleled. If there's no other... It's got small, I think... Chinese or Japanese symbols? I, I can't tell. Garbage disposal. Exhaust up two cards. Gain decks equal to the number of the cards you just exhausted. That's always going to be good for me. I love doing things like that. It does exhaust itself, though. Rewind. Gain three block. Reobtain all of the knives you spent this turn. Eh. Unruled. Deal nine damage for each stack of debuffs on you. Deal three additional damage. Fine. Okay, that's interesting. That seems to hint that there is a debuff build. I'm going to go to the bonfire here. That was probably a bad idea. Guess I'll tote to remove a card from my deck. Yeah. We just want defensive stuff here. And then we'll wait for embodiment to win the game for us, frankly. Hey, there's embodiment. I'll garbage disposal to remove those two. Get myself two decks. Oh, temporal essence. Please draw. Damn. Unparalleled, rearm, and then starlight will actually drop you. So. <laughs> Woo, that shouldn't have happened. There's our Temporal Essence. I am actually going to keep that in the deck if you don't mind video game. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh man, look at that Starlight going insane. Temporal Arms, 12 block on this turn as well because the only card in the deck. Embodiment is cool. I like it a lot. 
I like it, I love it, and I want more of it. Oh my god, that's two temporal essences. That's two many temporal essences. Yeah? What do you mean that's not anything? <laughs> Alright, this gets out of control really quickly, and I love it. Borrowed time. Oh! Okay, this is cool as hell. Draw five cards, gain three energy. Next turn, draw five fewer cards and lose three energy. And it just upgrades your immediate card draw. So if you have, like, a super aggressive deck and, like, a super instantaneous, uh, like, big damage deck, that's really cool. Soul Sculpture is a problem. Deal three damage six times. Enemy loses three strength. Obviously, that goes in a strength-related build, but unfortunately, it's two cost, so it will prevent unparalleled. And unsheath is deal six damage three times, apply two weak and frail to yourself, and nine damage three times. So that's 27 damage in three different allotments, which is important for extra strength or extra blight, as the case may be. But applying two weak and frail to yourself doesn't seem like a great idea. I don't even want borrowed time because our deck is actually quite slow. Oh, it feels bad, but I'm going to skip him. Hey, Kintsugi. Uh, removes five cards from your deck and you choose two curses to obtain. If you remove curses with the first effect, it will transform them instead because it was previously just too good. I really think that we take Kintsugi here and... We're just going to be removing the top layer of cards. Our whole idea is just going to be embodiment. So we need to get to it as quickly as possible and then have a super thin deck. Mm. Probably sickly and writhe? Yeah. Out of those curses at the very least. I like this. I like this. I want to make this an embodiment deck that also just gets a ridiculous amount of strength from stacks of that other card that I can't remember the name of. Unparalleled. There we go. Ugh. I'm going to use the Adrenaline Potion here. Yes, and we got embodiment. Unfortunately, I now can't afford Unparalleled. Whoops. Garbage disposal. Hell yes. Did exactly what I wanted it to. Come on. Alright. Another Starlight's probably a kill here. Seems like it. Liquid Bronze D Weaponry. At the start of your turn... <laughs> At the start of your turn, obtain five knives. D sounds for dimensional. So if there's something that allows you to just like use all of your knives at the same time, it would be extraordinarily really good. But I still don't know. I think I want to go for the morning call, get the extra draw in the opening turns. Hey, Riddick to Nekahedron. If your HP is full, gain energy at the start of each turn. Hell yes. Uh, five max HP, sure. We'll take the curse here. Oh, sorry, we won't take the curse here. Whoops, my bad. Said the entirely wrong word there. Starlight did not. Oh, no, it did put you on the ground. Beautiful. And then I'll put the other one in the back line on the ground. Come on, embodiment. Yep, embodiment, and then unparalleled. Um, like, I'm going to be taking some damage here, and I'm not happy about it, but still. Oh, yeah, that just weakened everyone in the turn that I was being attacked. That's insane. And then 
Oh, we don't have any knives. What? So we can weak everyone, uh, weaken everyone as much as we want, but we're not doing any damage right now. Because I burned my only knife generation in this entire deck. Oh, God. Well, this is a problem. <laughs> it was. <laughs> All right. And Temporal Arms is now going to allow me to generate some knives, thankfully. All right. <laughs> uh, we've seen all of these before. We're not going to take any of them. Morning call, happily. We'll rearm and garbage disposal both of those out of the deck. I'm just going to play unparalleled. Oops, I have cards that cost more than two. Okay, will that... Will unparalleled now trigger after I play embodiment? It won't. Okay, so there's just a buff there for unparalleled despite the fact that it's not doing anything. Uh, which I find to be weird, frankly. Um, I've got to use Starlight there because I really, really, really do need to try and make sure that it doesn't burn because it is a lot of our damage. Now, we just had a problem there. Temporal Arms drew outside of our turn from the Centennial Puzzle. So we got the knives from it, but we didn't get the block. Which is, in my mind, a problem. Ooh, we're going to have a lot of difficulty real soon. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Easy starlight and then kill. Misdirection. Farsing. I think I actually might want Farsing. It's just a nice block for the future that we don't really have access to right now. Okay. Now, the most unfortunate thing about this is the Gremlin Leader is now definitely going to be attacking as large as they can this turn, which is not good. Uh, and as a result, we're definitely going to die this turn, which is also not great. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not only did we die, but the second attack was enough. Well, the first attack was enough to get us low. The second attack was enough to use the fairy potion, and then we only healed for seven off of the back of that. So basically, when I decided my path here, I killed myself. I entirely killed myself by deciding that path. I thought this deck was really, really powerful, and in fact, it was. It just needs time to get started. So something like Oh my god, I was about to say something like Anchor. Anchor was there, but the thing is, the second turn in particular was super killer. Relying on Embodiment was really cool, but trying to mix that into a deck that also had Unparalleled for some reason didn't really make sense. Mixing that into a deck that just has Knives for some reason doesn't really make sense. What would have made sense would be taking Embodiment, taking Card Draw, and taking Garbage Removal. And then I just have a super thin deck that just has a bunch of temporal cards in it. And then I just allow the temporal cards to just draw themselves into my hand and play them all out. Another thing that would have been really, really good is just loading up with more discard synergy. And that would be to keep the temporal cards in my deck for a longer period of time. I think embodiment is really, really, really powerful. And I think running it against like knife synergy and strength synergy and cost synergy is effectively the mistake that new players make. They see things that are cool and they pick them up rather than consider how they fit together. The thing is, it's difficult to consider how things fit together on your first blush. I like this character. I'm going to be playing more of them. So my name for the moment has been, ooh, Unlock City. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future. By the way, Black Ruse is made by Black Ruse, the author, which adds the servant as a new playable character. All of the different 
mods that I currently have installed will be linked in the description down below, as well as a video instructing you on how to install them for yourselves. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.